For years, Magic Leap was one of the most anticipated pieces of technology on the planet. Now that it's finally here, what can we expect? To tell us, and Lauren Good from Wired, we are joined by the Chief Marketing Officer, Brenda Freeman. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm having a Beyonce moment here. <laughs> <laughs> so as chief marketing officer of a company like Magic Leap, you have a particularly interesting challenge in that you have to tell people what Magic Leap is and what it does when it's something that can really only be experienced when someone is wearing effectively a face computer. <laughs> Talk about that a little bit. Yes. How, do you, how do you market something like this? Yes, well, actually, one of the primary ways we market it is showing a little bit of what you see. And so we thought that it would be a really good thing for the audience to be able to take a look at a quick little trailer of one of our uh, experiences that's called Create. So let's take a look, and then we can talk about it. What was it that we just saw? Great. So, so Create is one of our uh, experiences that has been on the Magic Leap One platform. And it is, you know, it's, it's really almost like a, a digital playground that's actually in your room. And so one of the things that makes Create special is Magic Leap One is really about spatial computing. And so there's actually five cameras that are, uh, that are actually in the headset. Three of them are what you would call world cameras, and they mesh your room. Um, and once that room is meshed in 3D, then it goes up into the cloud and it stays there. And the other two uh, cameras actually track your eyes. And so what you're able to do is put digital objects into your meshed environment. And those digital objects, the thing that makes it magical is those digital objects recognize you and it's within context. So I can drop a digital ball on the sofa here and it will roll off of the, uh, you know, of the sofa here. So that's the thing that really sort of makes Magic Leap special. Create, we tend to like because right now we're very much uh, in the stage of building our ecosystem for developers. And it is one of those applications that allows you to really, you know, get a full uh, example of, of what all of the different features and the inputs that you can design for. So this is something that developers have right now. Regular consumers don't yet have access to. What is Magic Leap for? That example we just saw, um, it seemed like it was a little bit of a gaming thing, um, maybe some entertainment. Like, what, is its, what is its main application? Yeah, it's like Magic Leap is a platform. And so as such, there are an infinite number of applications and use cases. Some of the most obvious ones that you would think of, gaming um, and entertainment, that is very much um, on our platform, but we also have partners such as H&M Warpen. We've done, it's recently done a collaboration with Moschino brand. And so disrupting fashion, the future of fashion, maybe what we can do is show an example of that. It's Mosquito! <laughs> so, so in this case, it looks like someone 
goes shopping. Right. And they're, in, they're actually in the retail store, but they're seeing digital objects instead of physical ones. Exactly. So re remember, it's really about spatial computing. And so this idea of having your room meshed and being able to compute in different ways uh, but in a contextual manner. So disrupting the future of fashion, uh, disrupting the future of sports, uh, you know, disrupting communication and social. I could actually have a digital avatar here who could come into the room, could sit here on the couch, uh, could have eye contact with me. I can move this way and that way, and her eyes could, or his eyes, could move forward and backward. If I go too close, the AI that's actually stuffed into that digital object will know that I've invaded the personal space, and so they'll move back. So it's that sort of application that we are excited about, and we're looking for more, because we're very much in the stages right now of building that ecosystem. We launched in August. Um, we uh, you know, basically have about 1,000 developers that are working on the platform right now in all types of use cases, and we're looking for more. What's different um, between Magic Leap and something like Microsoft HoloLens or any other so-called mixed reality platform? Right. So mixed reality, and for those of you in the room that you know, are not aware or deep into this XR you know, reality space, you know, really all boats rise uh, with respect to other companies. And, and we actually welcome the fact that there are plenty of uh, companies that are in this space. So you have VR, you have AR, and then you have MR, which is mixed reality. Mixed reality is really this level of AI that's built into the system. And it's something that you, you tend to, in terms of the spectrum, you have VR and, and MR is probably the most complicated. It requires the, the largest amount of compute. So we tend to play in that space with HoloLens right now. So if you have you know, AR on your phone, right, and you just need a powerful mobile, mobile phone processor for that, and you have VR in which your face is completely in, enveloped, this is somewhere in between all of that. Exactly. Well, in mixed reality, like I said, I actually, there's presence. You know, so this idea of really breaking away from the screens. You no longer have to look at your screens. You have presence here. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to actually have my experience and also see you, Lauren, at the same time. Mm -hmm. So Magic Leap has had its fair share of critics, if you will. Uh, the company is was for a long time notoriously secretive about what it was working on while it was raising lots and lots of money. I think to date it's been reported the company has raised more than $2 billion, both from traditional tech investors and not so traditional. So you came into this company about two years ago into this already established environment. What was, what was that like for you? Yeah, well, you know, as my grandma says in Baltimore, don't say anything until you have something really good to say. Um, and so, you know, this idea of secrecy, um, I don't know if I would necessarily say a lot of that was by design, as much as the company was very inwardly focused for a number of years getting the tech right. Uh, you know, working, we basically, you know, not only build the device from a hardware perspective, we build our own software stack, we built our own content. And we actually took this device, this computing platform that just as early as, let's say, three or four years ago was large enough to fit inside a refrigerator, and now it's miniaturized so that it's actually on your head. So it took quite a number of years to be able to perfect that. And once we perfected that, they brought on you know, folks like me to be able to sort of tell the story. And so we pivoted, really, from being inwardly focused to being very much customer focused once I came on board. And it was about building that uh, playbook for launch. I mean, what's your response to criticisms from other people in the VR and AR space who have looked at what you're doing and say, like, you know, just have criticisms about it? I mean, it seems as though there's a lot of jostling right now around this particular area of technology. Sure. You know, the, the way we feel about it is we just stick to our game. Um, and we really don't get distracted too much from the, uh, you know, from some of the chatter. You know, the fact is we launched two months ago. Um, we had a conference, uh, you know, basically two months from there. We basically had over, uh, you know, 20 announcements. We had lots of partners who have been working with us for years that we were able to finally be able to speak to. We had demos. Um, and, uh, you know, we actually had a really great uh, coming out moment, if you will. So we're very much about building, uh, you know, the next computing platform. We want others to come along with us, and we just continue to forge our path. What was it like for you? I mean, you, you had uh, been at Nat Geo for a while. 
and DreamWorks. I mean, you were a big deal TV executive. And then you came into this world of relatively nascent technology that is not about 2D flat screens. Right. It's all about this volumetric sort of technology. Like, what was it like for you when you first started and had yeah. to work with this technology? So, you know, well, well, first of all, my roots way back before the marketing, um, I actually am an engineer by trade, a practicing engineer, family of engineers. And uh, so, you know, always have been a bit of a left brain, right brainer. Uh, but this idea of making sure that uh, you know, you come into a nascent space uh, with, a uh, with a tech startup like Magic Leap, um, it really, you know, the fundamentals are very much the same, which is really having a maniacal focus on the customer. Um, and so being able to really take, uh, you know, that foundation and intersect that with data and analytics and consumer insights, um, you know, we're able to build a playbook that made sense. Obviously here in this space, because we talk so much about what does the experience really like when you're, when you're wearing the headset, experiential um, and uh, you know, being able to make sure that we are out there um, doing as many demos as possible, that's a very important lever uh, you know, for us to pull and it will continue to, uh, to be so in the coming years. Give, can you give an example of that? I mean, in terms of a, sort of a, a real life uh, marketing approach that you're taking right now that's very different from something you might have done in the TV world? Yeah. Well, you know, probably a lot of it is just the storytelling in general um, is something that's really special, particularly for Magic Leap. We're a very unique, unconventional uh, technology company in that we have researchers and scientists and uh, software engineers, but we also have uh, you know, special effects experts and narrators and storytellers and authors. Um, and I think it's that special left brain, right brain mix that, uh, you know, makes us unique. And so as a marketer, I actually get the privilege to be able to put the spotlight and actually create those stories about the journey that we've been on, um, you know, primarily with the credibility of those that, are, that took the leap, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I see what you did there. <laughs> What? I'm a marker, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does the future of uh, not only this platform, but AR and VR and MR look like to you if you were to look five to 10 years down the road? Because, yeah. I mean, it seems as though people who have had this experience of trying things like Magic Leap or Oculus or, you know, they they're, they come out of it and they, un they get it. They understand why it's so, why it can be so emotional, why it can be so immersive. Mm -hmm. But it, there is still that whole part of the population that's never tried this thing. There's a barrier to having a computer. Like you guys actually have like a hip pack. Yeah. So people wear a headset and then carry a, a computer on their hip. So like, is there a point for you at which you think, it's going to get over that critical hump and it's going to become mainstream? And if so, like, what, what does that look like in the next yeah. five to 10 years? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I mean, it's certainly, I, I think most folks that are in this space, regardless of whether you're in virtual reality, augmented reality, or mixed reality, I think we all uh, would agree that we believe that this will be the next disruptive, uh, you know, computing platform uh, in the generation to come. Um, and so this idea of some of those traditional use cases that have everyday uh, utility, such as communication, uh, you know, such as entertainment and gaming, um, such as e-commerce, you know, those are really important use cases that we are starting to develop deeply um, around um, and getting, I would say, fairly visceral uh, you know, type of responses, you know, not only from the developers who tend to build, buy into our mission, um, but also from those that, that tend to experience it. And, uh, you know, just to show a few examples, we actually did show, I think, I think we have a couple of videos there, just to, to give an example of some of the posts, uh, you know, from the small f number of fans that are starting to grow. You know, it's kind of interesting. Like, this, this is happening without marketing. Like, I... There was a proposal right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Someone proposed to their, you know, to their fiancé wearing Magic Leap. So it's sort of like this, this identity uh, of cool and being a part of the future, wanting to be future forward, um, is, is very much a part of the mission and the marketing that we're trying to continue to build upon. And those are all just 
people who have the headset, they're building apps for it, they yeah. are voluntarily sharing this, yeah. this data. Yeah, so in right. the example of the proposal we just saw, what is happening behind the lens, behind right. the goggles that makes that very real life experience better in some way. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he could, he could add any sorts of digital objects. He could maybe have his family, because let's say his family lives overseas, um, and he was able to you know, broadcast his family while he's getting down on one knee uh, and proposing to his, uh, you know, to his girlfriend. I mean, it's those types of, of sort of like emotions that you can just really tap into with respect to having, I would say, hyper presence. You know, th that by far, I think, is really where the magic happens, is when you're able to really have hyper presence with someone in a way that you normally would not be able to. Because it's augmented in some way. It is, it's, it's augmented, and in, because of the contextual awareness, you know that that object is there, and so that's pretty much where the magic takes place. Is there an application or example of Magic Leap that you don't think people have seen yet that you think would be very cool and mixed reality? Ooh. Well, OK, so there, there are a few folks. Uh, we had about 1,600 or so uh, you know, developers and, and creators who came to our conference in Los Angeles um, a couple of weeks ago. And we had an augmented uh, reality um, digital human, her name is Micah. Um, and those that have got to experience Micah, I think you, that's one of those moments where you get that hair raising, uh, you know, the, the hair on the, on the back of your neck and on your, you know, on your arms sort of raise, because you're like, wow, okay, I know I'm interacting with and experiencing a digital human, and that digital human is re reacting and responding to me in a way that you just would not normally expect. So I would say that's probably one of the experiences that will be the most transformative, uh, you know, as it relates to communication uh, and, you know, productivity in, in the near future. Is this person, this digital person powered by AI in some way? Very much so. So it's responding to you. That's it's right. It's not programmed, it's actually just reacting. In that's some way. right. It's like you are the one that's evoking the, you know, the actions and reactions from that digital human. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's so. completely. <laughs> I mean, <do laughs> kind of like Westworld. The future is here, people. If there's one thing that you need to know before you leave our talk today, is we talk so much about future forward. Future is now. There are things like this that are happening right now. And if you aren't thinking of how to disrupt your respective industry, then you're behind. Uh, because there's lots of in, you know, companies in various industries that are starting to play around, you know, prototype, to figure out how do I you know, disrupt my way of designing? How do I disrupt my way of building cars? How do I disrupt fashion? You know, how do I disrupt e-commerce? All of those uh, you know, types of, of ideas for disruption and, and experimentation are happening now. So we, we invite you all to sort of come in and, and play with us. Brenda, thank you so much for chatting with me this morning. Thank you, Lauren. It was a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.